as a friendly reminder, uh, I did mention this several times that we do have the, um, I did email you all the, um, the lesson and you can also find the lesson on the Word and Worship Church app, okay? And so we're gonna talk about, this is part one, seven steps to overcome trials and tribulations. The seven steps to overcome trials and tribulations. I just think this is always um, a befitting lesson. Um, I think it, we all need encouragement. Um, I think I mentioned this before, and I've heard my father say this many times, and I may have, you, I know you've heard me say that you either in a trial, either you're going into a trial in the middle of a trial or coming out of a trial, usually those particular cycles. And trials and tribulations, they're not going to stop. We're going to have a season of favor. We're going to have a season of um, Ecclesiastic says, you know, there's a season, so there's a time to cry, a time to rejoice, a time to mourn, and all of that. So that's just the cycle of life. But in order for us to really be able to maximize our life, we have to understand the purpose of going through trials and tribulations. And we also have to know how to go through those trials and tribulations because we can never, ever predict what we're going to go through. And as far as spiritual health and our mental health that we do, we do, we, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into it, that we do find solace and refuge in the word of God. We find um, our system of belief, the Bible, and our faith in God that's going to help us through some challenging times. Um, so the lesson A is uh, to understand God's plan and strategies for achieving victory for overcoming our trials and tribulation. The memory verse, James 1, 2 through 4, it says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And so when we define trials and tribulations, that's really defined as difficult experiences or problems. And so what I want to do, we're gonna open up and I really would love for your participation and your feedback. Um, so I'm not the only one talking all the time. Um, or if you don't want to answer verbally, you can definitely, definitely type your answers into the the chat box. So our open a discussion question for this evening is what are some of the trials, difficult experiences, problems you may have faced in your life? Okay, what are some of the trials, if it's not too personal and if you don't mind sharing, okay? What are some of the trials, again, I said difficult experience or problems you, have, you may have faced in your life? And the floor is open. Loss of a loved one. Okay, yeah. Um, I, I had my, my sister-in-law experience that this week. So that's definitely, definitely a challenging moment. Anyone else? What are some of the trials you may have faced in your life? And we define a trial and tribulation as a difficult experience or problem. I have one. I'm actually in the midst of one mm. with my daughter, Blair. Okay. Um, and I know she doesn't mind me sharing this. Blair had a stroke okay. in March of this okay. year. Right. And um, God has been so awesome and she's making such great progress. But right. it is definitely, I would call a trial because it takes um, a lot of my time being already a caregiver for my mother wow. and now becoming one for my daughter. Right. And making sure that she goes to all these appointments. Right. And in the midst of all of that, God has kept my mind, kept my peace, kept my joy, mm -hmm. has given me strength that I never knew I had. So I'm just watching God unfold this. And I know in the end, it's all going to be okay because I have not lost my mm -hmm. joy. <laughs> God has been good. And I see her in the spirit fully yes. recovered. Powerful. Oh, but God is good. Yes. Thank you so much, Sister Pam. Anyone else would like to share what are some of the trials that you may have faced in your life? There are some comments in the chat box whenever you're ready. Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. 
Um, Sister Rosie said lost the husband. Sister Kakia stated, or type rather, divorce slash failure of relationship, health yeah. issues unemployment mm -hmm. and then um I, i'm gonna just say for me um college you know i became like a indecisive um college student and then after i graduated then trying to find a job right right okay and believe it or not um those are very common experiences um that many of us have faced or you know that we will face and, uh, and again, for the believer, we're not saying that we don't feel emotions. We're not saying that we, we don't feel the trauma as a result to going through trials and tribulations, but we have a source. We have a connection that's going to keep us connected and motivated and encouraged and, you know, for us to be able to move forward. So again, we're going to go over the, this is the part one of the seven steps to overcoming trials and tribulations. And we have a lot of scriptures. Um, and again, yes, ma'am. It's one other comment I just wanted to mention, um, Sister Yvette stated, moving away from family. That's a good one. Okay, moving away from family. And so as we get started, we're gonna talk about the first three steps and I'm going to mention them and then we're gonna go back in and, 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 and dissect it just a little bit. Okay, so the first three um, steps. Number one, remember the God you serve. Number two, seek his presence. Number three, demoralize your enemy. And so as we are moving forward to talk about the first three ways of overcoming trials and tribulations, difficult moments. Number one, remember the God you serve. Um, we need to turn to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. I do have some readers. Um, know that God is faithful and he will not fail. Know that God is faithful. Again, we must remember the God we serve. We must know that God is faithful and he will not fail. And a lot of times we know in our spirit, um, but sometimes our flesh has to catch up. I remember going through a challenging moment and um, I lost I lost a job. And again, my spirit knew it was going to be okay. My spirit understood that uh, God is faithful, but my flesh had to catch up to my spirit. Okay, so know that God is faithful and that he will not fail you. First Corinthians 10 and 13. There had no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. The key word in this entire scripture is, but God is faithful. Whatever God tells us is the truth. If it's in his word, we attach belief to it. And that should activate our faith, okay? Again, knowing that God is faithful, he will not fail us under the part of remembering the God we serve. Um, read Deuteronomy 31 and six. And again, all this is under knowing that God is faithful, he will not fail. Deuteronomy 31 and six. I'm supposed to read this one too? Yes, you're gonna, um, you're gonna, okay. read, every, every, you're gonna read every all the scriptures in the first, Okay, the got one it. and number three. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he, he it is that do it good with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I love one translation says he would not fail or abandon you. We must remember God is faithful and he will not abandon us. And again, these are reminders. Again, we may know this, but we have to be consistently reminded of this fact. And that's why we can just read the Bible and stop reading it. We have to read it. We have to meditate on it. We have to continue to digest it, continue to remind ourselves until our faith catches up, until our, our flesh catches up with our faith, okay? Um, also, look at the size of your God and not the size of the problem. Many times our first initial reaction 
is to really magnify the problem. We don't really do it intentionally, but we have a tendency to just consistently fixate on the, uh, the uncomfortable situation. We fixate on the challenge and we're so focused on the challenge that sometimes we forget to focus on our God that's bigger than the problem. When we hear the word, oh, magnify, we need to magnify God above our problem. And so we want to go to 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47. Again, look at the size of your God and not the size of your problem. And again, y'all, we have to rehearse this. I don't care how long you've been saved. You, you could have, God could have brought you out of one situation and now you're going through another one. So again, these are principles that we have to consistently practice. We have to consistently remind ourselves. Okay, so 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47. Then said David to the Philistine, thy comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all of this assembly shall know that the Lord save it not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. So this is a very familiar passage of scripture of David and Goliath. One of my favorite, favorite passages that has encouraged me through the years. Goliath was considered a giant because he stood over nine feet tall. Um, the problem was Goliath. Goliath was um, attacking, uh, the Philistines were attacking the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, they were frightened. Goliath decided because of his size and his stature he, he wanted to make an arrangement, and the arrangement was, okay, you know what, instead of the entire army fighting, you choose one good man to fight me, and whoever wins uh, this battle, then they will win the war, which means you will be held captive. Um, but God used David to deliver the children of Israel from this powerful, powerful Philistine nation. And so again, when you're thinking about your problem, when you're thinking about how huge your problem is, and it is huge. One of the things that I had to, uh, when going through pastoral counseling and, and being a chaplain, and one of, and a lot of the early mistakes that I made very early on in my ministry when I was ministering to people that were in a crisis or in a difficult situation, I did not allow them, for lack of a better word, give them permission, not that they needed it, to feel how they feel. If you're going through a, a traumatic situation and you're frightening, it's okay to say that I'm scared. That's the emotion that you're feeling. And one of the things that you've heard me say this before, these scriptures are good. These scriptures we need to use to minister to ourselves. But it's also equally important that when you're talking and ministering to somebody that's going through a difficult situation, allow them to feel the way they feel. Allow them to speak. Allow the human, the emotional side of their experience to be able to be able to come through. And again, I've experienced that before in church that people are going through trials and tribulations and don't get me wrong, their faith in it, you know, even though they're emotionally feeling depleted, you know, they still use words of affirmation, words of joy, words to build their spirit up. And all of that is okay. But it's important that when we're ministered to somebody, make sure they feel, allow them to feel the way they need to feel to be able to process the emotions, the fear, the anger. Sometimes you're just being tired and overwhelmed. Believe it or not, when you give voice to all of those emotions, that is a form of confession. Many times when we think about confession, we think about as it relates to our sin. But confession is really calling the thing the thing, acknowledging what it is. And when we can acknowledge and when we can be very clear about what we're dealing with, then when we go to God in prayer, we can say, God, I need your help. My point is that when we're ministering to people and they're going through challenging moments, before we minister to them in scripture, because scripture is very important, 
allow them to really process and to feel the way they feel. I remember trying to talk and the person cut me off in mid sentence. It's all, it's gonna be okay, it's already all right. I knew that, I promise you, I knew it because I preached it. But the point, I just needed to be heard. I needed to give voice to my pain and I need to give voice. So the point is, is that we have to magnify, we have to fixate it. We have to fixate on God. And again, you all, if we, many of us understand the importance of God in our life and the importance of church and the importance of worship and the importance of, of fellowshipping and getting the word to Bible study in our own personal time and going to church, we understood the importance of it. And if we didn't, I can tell you when we were on lockdown for those four months or five months, I didn't realize how fundamentally important my the the, this, the the word of God the having church and fellowship not only was that important to my spiritual health I did not realize how important all of those strategies were to my mental health as well okay and so again when we talked about look at the size of your God and not the size of your problem and we use that as a principle that 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 David was so connected with God and he knew how big his God was. So even though Goliath stood nine feet tall, he did not, he wasn't afraid and he did not, and he did not back down from the trial of the, from the enemy. Also plant it down in your spirit that with God, all things are possible. Again, plant it down in your spirit, rehearse it, let it understand it, confess it, Okay, you all, that's why the, some people call it words of affirmation. We call it words of, of um, um, what's words of affirmation are you, you just speaking into existence. A lot of times you have to confess that thing. That's why I love getting, you can confess the scriptures. Um, but I also, my, my, my go-to phrase or my phrase of affirmation when I'm really stressed out and when my spirit and my flesh <laughs> They're battling, going back and forth. One minute, I believe God. The next minute, I'm like, ooh. I had to get me a phrase. And my phrase is, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Because I had to literally battle that, that sense of wanting to move into a place of doubt and in in a place of fear. So plant it down in your spirit that with God, all things are possible. And let's go to Mark 9, 20 through 23. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said of a child, and oftentimes it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thy canons do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, if thy canest believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Amen. In the previous story, we were talking about David and Goliath. Goliath was David's trial and tribulation. In this passage of scripture, his son was his trial and tribulation. He was going through with his child. This man was desperate to get help for his son because his son was demon possessed. OK, and he, we need he needed Jesus to heal his son. And the thing was fascinating about this was this, this man was desperate. He went to the disciples. Jesus was on the mountain uh, configuration. Um, and this man went to the most obvious place. He by this time, um, he had heard how powerful Jesus was and his son was possessed with a devil. So his trial was dealing with a child that was in trouble. He brought his son to the most obvious place. He brought his son to the disciples and the disciples did not have any power to cast them out, cast the devil out. And so when Jesus came by, um, the, the disciples and the, the Pharisees and the scribes, they were the religious people. They were going back and forth. You know, they were antagonizing the disciples and the man was like, okay, I. I, I just need somebody to heal my son. So when Jesus came from the mountain 
and saw the disciples and the other religious leaders going back and forth, he was like, what is the commotion? And this man spoke up, he said, hey, my son is demon possessed. I need help. And that's when Jesus brought this thing around. And I want y'all to hear me and I want you to hear me clear. That's why it's important that we believe the right thing. When we believe something, that means we believe something is true. But that's why it's important that we have the right information and not misinformation. And I'm not trying to get political here by no means, but we understand what believe, mis, believing on misinformation. And again, the word of God to the Christian is like water to our body. We have to understand, but the word of God is nothing but words on the page unless we add belief to it. And when we add belief to it, that means we are saying that what we're believing is true, okay? And so Jesus has simply said, if you can only believe, don't get me wrong, the, the disciple, and I just got this revelation, even though the disciples should have had, they should have had the faith to believe that he, uh, they could cast out this devil or God was, was, they had the power to be able to uh, process and to deliver this man from this situation. He also had to believe as well. And so one of the most powerful things that I heard the testimony, but something that Sister Pan mentioned is that even though she's going through a challenge, she's keep throwing out faith affirmations, okay? Faith affirmations. And that's what we have to do. We have to believe. We must believe that God can do the impossible. We believe God will bring us through. Again, we must believe that God can bring us through. We must be open to how he brings us through sometimes. And I want to park right there. We have to believe that God can bring us through, okay? That's fundamentally important. But the challenge is when we know he's going to bring us through, he may not bring us through in our timing. He may not, and, and, and bringing us through may not look like the way we think bringing us through may look like. And so even though we're praying and we're fasting and we're believing God, we still need to be open and connected and to allow God process us so we can get through. Again, the most challenging part of, of being in a trial or tribulation or a difficult moment is having the capacity to believe, but making sure that we keep the belief system together. And so that's why day by day, sometimes minute by minute, if you've been like me, sometimes moment by moment, I had to continue to reform God. God, and I often say, I'm going to keep saying it until I believe it. Okay, so the question, what purpose do trials serve? Why is it important that we learn to be faithful during times of trials and tribulation? The question again, what purpose do trials serve in our life? Why is it important that we learn to be faithful during our trials and tribulation? It's a test of our faith. And it also helps to build our faith whenever we have a trial. And um, let's see what's the second question here. Why is it important that we learn to be faithful? It's so yeah. that um, once we receive the blessing or we get through the um, trial, let me just say, once you receive your blessing, you are more appreciative of it and you okay. care for it, so to say. And um, Kakia posted here in the chat box, it strengthens our relationship with God. Wow, very good. Uh, <clears throat> Anyone else? What purpose do trials serve? Why is it important that we learn to be faithful during times of trials and tribulations? Yes. I, I like to say that I feel like it help, keeps us humble, that we don't start being prideful in our own mindset, thinking that, we can handle every situation without God. Like we have to make sure that we keep him in the forefront, keep him at the seat of our heart. Because I think sometimes we just, people will get into such a, a despair that we always want to trouble God when we're going through something. But it helps us to be more humble and not to just fall into our own selfish and prideful ways. Okay, okay. really good. Anyone else? What is the purpose? of trials or well, what do what what purpose do trials serve and why is it important that we learn to be faithful during these times 
this Lisa, I think it, it helps. That's how we grow. Um, to be able to stretch yourself and to allow God to stretch you beyond what your, your capacity is for yourself allows you to grow. And that allows him to be able to use you in bigger and better ways and for you to see bigger and better things of God in your life. So it's an opportunity for growth. Right. Yes. Very good. I agree. And anyone else? Did we have any comments in the chat box? In reference yeah, there's one more comment in the chat box. Um, Kakia type, it also gives our testimony. It does. It does. And we must confess when we're in it, it's uncomfortable. We don't like it. But that's why we have to stay the course. You have to stay the course. Have to. Because if we don't stay the course, number one, we can move into a place of despair and discouragement. That's why it's so important when we're going through, and we're probably getting that further down. That's why it's so important to stay connected. The natural instinct for most of us, not all of us, that when we're going through a, a difficult situation, we want to isolate. We want to be by ourselves. And that's really the last thing that you need because you may be in a place that you need somebody to encourage you or you need somebody to talk to. Okay, so Tashawn, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I was just wanting to say right quick, you have to be real careful about isolation. I believe isolation is a trick of the enemy because if he can get you alone by yourself, he can feed you all kind of negative ideas and thoughts and you'll believe it, you know, because you're not connected as you see. Right. Yeah, and I believe, thank you, Shannon, that's what made this whole lockdown so traumatic for a lot of people, especially for the ones that stay by themselves. And thank God for technology. Um, that was at least some kind of interaction. And that's one reason why we were very determined to, you know, at least if, even though it wasn't, we weren't able to meet physically, but at least virtually, okay? Um, number two, number two, the second way that we can overcome our trials and tribulation is by seeking his presence seeking his presence. I can't stress that enough. Seeking his presence. Um, listen to music that ushers in the Holy Spirit. Listen to music that ushers in the Holy Spirit. Um, read Psalms 100, 1 through 5, please. Psalms 100, 1 through 5. Okay, Psalms 100, 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people in the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Yes. Thank you so much. And again, there's a method to the madness. <laughs> there's a reason why we do what we do. There's a reason why we sing and the reason why we worship and there's a reason why we pray. And there's a reason why we read his word. And there's a reason why we spend time. And again, you have to seek his presence. Um, the reality is we, 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 can, we can make it in this life without God. We can make it on this journey through the inconsistencies in life and the ups and downs. We can't do it without God. And so again, listen to music that ushers in the Holy Spirit. Thanksgiving helps us to put our focus on our blessings and not our challenges. Listening to music and, and singing songs of praise will serve as encouragement. And again, listen to music, get into the presence of the Lord. So my question is, what is your favorite song you listen to when you are going through a challenging time. What is your favorite song you listen to when you're going through a challenging time? One of my, well, I have several, but I'll say one of mine is When I'm Weak by William Murphy. Okay. Okay. There's one that my daughter um, sent me that I found so encouraging because of everything she's going through. It's by Marvin Sapp, and mm. it's called Close. Mm. Very good, very good. Anyone else? 
Lord, you are good. Mm, Lord, you are good. Okay. Lakeitha said, no other choice. Who sings that? By Ty Trivet. I have no other choice but to trust. Very good. Anyone else? Because those lyrics, oh my goodness, those lyrics can really, really, really minister to you. Who else? What is your favorite song that you listen to when you're going through a challenge in time? Spirit oh, Breakout. Ooh, Sister Ruth, that, uh, that's one of those songs that uh, you get slayed in the spirit on that one. Hey, Amen. Spirit mm. Breakout. That's a good one. Spirit Breakout. Yes. Anyone else? I was just going to say, I don't really have a song, so sometimes I just make something new. Make, make up my well, own can, words and my own tune. Be my own tune. Well, well, you know we have that in common, because y'all know I'll, I'll write a song on the spot up there. <laughs> so, hey, it's good. Yeah, but you're yeah. more brave than me. Don't nobody hear me but me. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord. Joyful yes, Lord. Yes, the I, I, that's said. what I said. I just make a joyful sound to the Lord. <laughs> uh, do we have any comments in the chat box? Yes, yes, it's a few comments. Um, let's see, Sister I'm Unique said, I need you now by Smokey Norville. Ooh, that's a good Awful. one. Um, Sister Cookie said, Made Away. Sister Rosie said, Waymaker. Yeah. Sister Kia said, Jonathan McReynolds. Sister Ashley said, Order My Steps. Yes, Glory to the Lamb. I have a list. <laughs> right, right. So again, the importance of what we put into our our spirit is so important when we're, when we're at all times, honestly, but mostly when we're going through because we have to, have to, have to continue to feed ourselves and to encourage ourselves so we can stay mentally and emotionally and spiritually in tune, okay? Um, also, stay in his word and meditate on it consistently, okay? This is under number two, seek his presence. Listen to music that ushers in the Holy Spirit Stay in his word and meditate on it constantly, okay? Um, let's go to Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. Okay, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my saving. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for thy or life unto those that find them in health to all their flesh. So again, like I mentioned, we must use the word of God. The Bible has to be our source of encouragement. And, and by no means am I discouraging us from reading those self-help books and all of that kind of stuff. But it's important that we, we have to process and get this word in our hearts. We have to make sure that's our foundation Find scriptures related to your situation and meditate on them, okay? Find scripture that's related to your situation and meditate on them. Also, go to your secret place. You all, if nothing else, if nothing else in this ministry, I, I, we focus on prayer. That is our lifeline to the Holy Spirit. And it makes sense why the enemy fights us in prayer. He fights us to read the word, he fights us to worship. He understands the power and the, the spiritual connection that we gain and the spiritual benefits that we gain when we do all of those things to connect us to God. It builds our spirit, it encourages us, it motivates us. And so as we mature in Christ, you all, we move past feeling like it, feeling like praying feeling like worshiping, feeling like reading our word. It, it, it needs to go beyond feeling. Okay, I may not feel like it, but it is a spiritual necessity for me to do so. Okay, go to your secret place. Matthew 6 and 6, please. Matthew 6 and 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and then thou hast shut thy door. Pray to thy father, which in secret and in thy father which seeth in secret shall reward reward thee openly thank you the amplified version yeah very good but, you got that good okay <laughs> but when you pray go into your most private room close the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father will see what is done in secret will reward you so the secret place is really a place of prayer and meditation. 
a place that we can block out all the distractions, okay? And I probably say this probably every week, every Sunday, in, in whatever capacity, the importance of prayer. You all, that is a basic Christian fundamental that we have to incorporate in our lives if we're going to have any kind of victory. Close represents a place of isolation from distraction, okay? Um, again, we must seek his presence. So the question is, how can prayer help us to cope with our problem? How can prayer help us to cope with our problem? That's the question that I want you all to answer. How can prayer help us to cope with our problem? Well, it could be considered a, um, a form of meditation because okay. you are getting focused and then you also are somewhat humbling yourself because you're asking God for, to help you. You're seeking his wisdom and guidance, you know, if you're trying to make a, a decision. But, um, you know, once again, you're building your faith muscle. But what are some things that could be a distraction when you're trying to pray? It could just be um, just racing thoughts or negative thoughts or the TV's on or um, things like that. Okay. How can prayer, thank you, Sean, how can prayer help us to cope with our problems? I think it allows us to just find, find strength uh, sometimes your prayers, you start talking to God, and then the next thing you know, you're just crying. Right. Sometimes those tears just are just what God already, you know, can can see and hear and just knows, you know, your heart. Sometimes because you be so full sometimes that that's all you can do. You can't even say a word. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you have to write stuff down, but uh, just... It just gives you an opportunity to just kind of help connect and talk to them when you can't talk to nobody else. You know, God is listening to you. But more so, like I say, I feel like when I, you know, just even just me personally, I feel like when I do pray more and feel that tank up even more, it just strengthens me and gives me just the courage to know that I can push on. Right. And even me, so I, I sleep better when I pray. Mm -hmm. So prayer just helps you to just even just to start worrying about things that, you know, you can't even change and just leave it and let go and let God handle it. Powerful. We're very good. Anyone else? Anyone yeah, else? I think this is Lisa. I think that a lot of times when we pray, we are able to pour things out to God and express things and just kind of empty ourselves out. But it is also an opportunity for us to hear mm. from God. Right. You know, a, we have the tendency to think that prayer is just talking to God, but sometimes prayer is listening to God and communing with God and giving him the opportunity to pour those things that you need, the answers that you need or the peace that you need or whatever you need back into you. So it's an opportunity to make that connection with him to get what you need, whatever that is. Very good. Yeah, I agree with everyone's answers. Everyone, absolutely, um, and 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 it and, and it also gives us. He he can download in our spirit, and strengthen our spirit, man. You know, and so everything you all said is so important because we sometimes need that personal connection, like you're saying that you can give voice to all of your challenges, and you can that stuff that we've been holding in, and we don't feel comfortable telling anybody. And you all have heard me say this before, that we can be so vulnerable in his presence. We don't have to go into his presence with the, with the mask and, you know, being strong and, you know, the, the, all of these ideas that we have to present in front of other people, this mask, this image, you, we don't have to present that to God. We can just be vulnerable and, and there's such an intimacy that we can just say, Lord, I'm just having a bad day. I'm on the verge of hating this person, or I'm just upset with my life, or I'm mad at my life, or I'm just, God, why am I going through? You can be that in his presence. It's so spiritually connecting, but it's also very therapeutic that we can be able to express and, and, and 
release all of those emotions and frustrations that we've been holding, holding in. Okay. And so the last one that we're going to discuss tonight, again, number two, seek his presence. Number three, demoralize your enemy. When we talk about demoralize your enemy, that's fear, that's Satan, that's anything that's designed to distract us, designed to discourage us. And so victory starts with the spoken word. So um, go to Isaiah 55, 10 through 11. This is the Amplified. For as the rain and the snow come it down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, making it bare and sprout and providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So will my word be, which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, useless, without result, mm. without accomplishing what, what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Amen. We must pray and quote the scripture. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible is the truth of God. The Bible, when we connect with the word of God, we believe it as our truth. If it says that I must believe it, just like rain and snow comes down from heaven with the sole purpose of making things grow, giving life to things, well, God is saying my word is designed to do the same thing in your life spiritually. It will accomplish succeed what it has intended for it to do. But again, we must know the word of God. And if the word of God says I can have it, then we have to believe it that we can have it. Okay, um, let's go to Mark 11 and 23, please. And again, number three, we must, we must demoralize your enemy. Victory starts with the spoken word. Okay, and now Mark 11 and 23, please. King James Version. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thy removed and be thy cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. And we understand that a mountain represents something that is gigantic in your life. Okay, and so that challenge, that issue can look like a mountain. It can be so high till you can't see around it. It can be so wide that you can't see above it, over it, or around it. It's just so huge. And when you compare yourself and looking at how gigantic the mountain or the challenge is, it can be overwhelming. But something that's more powerful than that mountain, something that's more powerful than that issue, that, that trial, is your faith. We have to believe it, okay? He shall, he shall have whatever he say that he can have. And if you realize, he said, say. So that's why, again, it goes back to words of affirmation. That's why even in church, you know, sometimes we tell you to, you know, speak those things, be not as though they were. Turn to your neighbor and give them a, a praise report. You know, we're not saying that we're saying in the spirit is, all, is already happening, okay? Because we can have what we say. And it goes back, even though that's a positive thing, when we are speaking the word of God, it can be a negative thing if we're not speaking the word of God because you will have what you say you can have. This is not scripture, but this is a quote, whatever you tell yourself is the truth. And so again, when we're talking about our words and quoting the word of God, it is equally important that we do not quote negativity, that we don't say, I'm going to die. I even have to, because words have power. You know, I remember saying, my head is killing me, or you make me sick. You realize that you have just put out there in the atmosphere, and you have just attached belief to that word. And you're going to allow that stuff to come to pass. And so, again, that's why we have to quote the word of God. If you can't, if you don't know what to say, just thank him. If you don't know what to say, say, Lord, I believe you. So, again, we have what we say we can have. And that's positive and that can be negative. 
Okay, again, we must cultivate a spirit of gratitude and praise. We must cultivate a spirit of gratitude and praise. To be honest with you all, if you realize I'm getting excited about this lesson, that's one of the reasons why in our, my prayer time, when I asked God, you know, I was seeking his face about what to name the church, he said the word and worship church. Because those are the two foundational things that we need as Christians, foundational things that we need to be able to make it and to grow and to be able to grow spiritually and to be able to have the God kind of like that we have. And if you notice, even in our ministry, we do a lot of singing, we do a lot of praying, um, and we do a lot, of course, the word of God, not saying no other churches aren't like that, but I'm just saying that we, we understand and that's what the vision that God gave us, the importance of the word and the worship, okay? We most cultivate a spirit of gratitude and praise. Um, read 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know, all the scriptures that I've read and will read, I personally think I really want you all, I want you all to memorize this. I, again, I'll use all these scriptures, but this scripture just, just rejoiced and I felt the quickening in my spirit. This scripture is going to be life for us. I don't know who's going through something, you know, but if you look at the steps, rejoice forevermore. Again, how are we going to make it through this trial? Rejoice. Number one. Number two, pray without ceasing. Number three, and give thanks. Okay, so again, I want y'all to write this verse down. Write it down. Meditate on it. Remember it. Let that be your new quote, hashtag, whatever. Powerful, powerful scripture. Okay, um, so our last one of our last questions, how can having a spirit of gratitude defeat the enemy in our lives when we are going through challenging moments? How can having a spirit of gratitude defeat the enemy in our lives when we're going through challenging moments? That's the question. It kind of gives you something positive to um, look at. You know, not just always dwelling on the negative. I think Sister Pam gave us the perfect example about what she's dealing with and how she's staying um, motivated and encouraged in, during this time. Okay, okay. How can having a spirit of gratitude defeat the enemy in our lives when we are going through challenging moments? I believe the enemy sees us. Just like you said, you have to watch what you say. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. So right. if he hears that, he takes it to God and say, did you hear her say, I'm going to die and not live? So I'm always careful with my words. I always speak life to Blair. I always encourage her. I always speak encouragement and things because I know the enemy is watching. Mm. He's listening. Mm. Very good. But other yeah. people are watching too as right. well. Right, right. Do we have any comments in the comment box in reference to this uh, question? Yes. Um, Sister Kakia, you wrote, it makes you focus on your blessings and what's good at the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So again, um, and then intercede. This is going to be the last section. And this intercede for others facing similar challenges. Again, number three, we mentioned the, how to demoralize the, the, the your enemy. And we talked about intercede for others facing challenging moments. Again, in the midst of going through, we want to be a, an encouragement to somebody else. And so let's read Job 42 and 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had done had before. And I want to say something. My daughter says she feel like she's going through like Job. But I told her in the end, she's going to come out just like Job. Right, right, right. And that's a belief powerful. And so Job, he, he 
the Bible talks about he was a, a righteous man. He lost everything, literally his family, his wealth, his health, his good name, his friends. He was able to pray for others during his difficult time. Also, I was looking at, I was looking at some morning show and one of the things that they had mentioned and when you're going through a very difficult time, they encourage you to either volunteer or to help others out. And what that does is this gives you an opportunity to take the focus off what you're dealing with. I feel like this is very, very, very similar that if you're going through something, it's important that you intercede, that you pray for somebody, that you help somebody. Because not only, and believe it or not, even encourage somebody as well. Okay, um, so the last question for this evening is how can it benefit us to pray for others when we are going through? I guess I just answered that question for you all. Okay, look like I just answered it. So with that being said, let's kind of rehearse uh, what we just talked about. Again, we talked about the seven, um, the seven steps to overcoming trials and tribulations. And we talked about the first three. Number one, remember the God you serve seek his presence and demoralize your enemy. This is a self-assessment question. You don't have to answer it out loud, but this is something that I want you to think about and I want you to meditate on and I want you to process. Uh, am I going to let this season make me angry and bitter or am I going to let God mold me into someone who is stronger and better? I wanna read that one more time. And this is called a self-assessment question. Am I going to let this season make me angry and bitter? Or am I going to let God mold me into someone who is stronger and better? I want that to sink in just a little bit. I want that to sink into our hearts and our spirit. Okay. So our action step for this week as it relates to our lesson this week Seek out people that you know who are fake. I'm sorry. I'm not going to, okay. Yeah, praying for me. Um, I am, <laughs> action step. This week, seek out people you know who are facing challenges and sow faith, hope, and encouragement in their lives. Again, our action step for this week is to Seek out people you know who are facing challenges and so faith, hope, and encouragement in their lives. Okay, so we have we two have minutes comment. left. Any any comments? Any yeah, questions? Yeah, so could Kenya could ask what was the scripture Pastor mentioned last to meditate on? It's First Thessalonians five sixteen through eighteen, and somebody can potentially chat, type that in the chat box. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Oh, Lord. Do we have any comments in the chat box? Um, That, that was the only one. I'm just going to try to attempt to type it. You say First Thessalonians? Yes, ma'am. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Uh, and while she's typing that, do we have any comments, any questions, any comments from the lesson, any feedback? I, I got one little comment I wanted to just um, share. Um, you know, when we was talking about prayer and um, scripture and um, staying positive, upbeat, it made me think about in the Bible when we put on the whole armor of God. Yeah. in the helmet and so if you think about it when we we're praying and reading our scriptures that is our helmet you know if you got on the helmet then can't nothing get in your head and you know a lot of times that's where the enemy starts it, he'll start feeding you all those negative thoughts and get you isolated and beat you down but if you got your helmet on then you know you can't get you amen amen thank you sean any other comments any other comments, any questions at this time? Okay. All right. Come on, let's give, uh, let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Give God some praise. Um, we do have um, two announcements. The first announcement, um, 
we will not have Wednesday night Bible study next week because we do understand that that's the day before Thanksgiving. Okay, so we're going to allow, we're going to um, use this time to be able to spend time with our families and to prepare ourselves, to prepare ourselves safely. Um, the other thing is, the other announcement is that we're not, we're having our weekly in-person service this week on Friday and not Thursday. So it's going to be this Friday at 7. Um, of course, the praise and worship team, y'all have come out a little early to, to be able to practice. Um, so we will be having our in-person service slash pre-recording for Sunday, this uh, Friday at 7. Um, you will still need to register. You need to go to w our website, www.church.org. Okay. All right. Um, Sister Pam, do you mind closing us out in prayer tonight? Do you mind closing us out? And I appreciate Sean McDowell and, and, and Sister Pam um, for, for reading it for me tonight. And I just appreciate everyone for definitely pressing your way um, out tonight. Yes, ma'am. Sister Sean. Would you like for me to stay on the line? You want to call me another day about that assignment you've given me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we'll talk later. Okay, so you'll just call me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, um, Sister Pam, please do the benediction for us, please. Father, we thank you for this lesson on tonight. We thank you for each and every one that was here to participate. Lord, don't let this word leave our minds or our heart, but help us to meditate on it day and night. We thank you for Pastor Scott and First Lady Scott. God, continue to bless them and keep them, God. But I'm asking you to help us to overcome our trials and our tribulation. Help us to have joy in the midst of it. It's not always an easy process, but we can do it with you. Without you, God, there is nothing possible, but with you, all things are possible. I'm asking you to remember every need on tonight, whether somebody needs healing, we ask you to touch their bodies now in the name of Jesus. Whatever way that needs to be made, Father God, make that way. We declare it and we speak it into their lives right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you to have, let us have a wonderful night's sleep and rest in you peacefully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. You all have a good night. Be blessed.